They say you should keep your friends close and your enemies closer, but nobody expected the claims that Christian Horner had in the build-up to the final Grand Prix of the season in Abu Dhabi. More so than anyone else, the subject of his claims, Lewis Hamilton, was absolutely perplexed, which has us thinking. Is the timing of this intentional? Is this subterfuge sabotage or substantial? Where there's smoke, there's fire, or probably an Alpine, and in this case, the source of the fire may have just been revealed. Want to get down to the bottom of all of this? Why are we getting such conflicting claims? And what is the root cause of all of this hearsay? Because if we're honest, we think there is something far deeper at play than all of this he said, she said. And stick around to the end, because the intentions behind all of this may have just been undone, and the gauntlet laid down for not only next season, but many seasons after it. So what's been going on? For all of those out of the loop, let's go through some context before we really get into the meat of all of this. At the start of the Abu Dhabi week, Weekend, Horner revealed to the media that Lewis Hamilton's team had approached Red Bull for a drive, as well as going on to say that Hamilton's team had had some serious talks with Ferrari. The insinuation that Hamilton had been shopping around for a new drive when partnered with the amount of time that Hamilton takes to agree contracts is pretty serious, suggesting that perhaps Lewis put Mercedes on the back burner while looking around for either a more desirable seat or a better deal. Horner had this to say. We have had several conversations over the years about Lewis joining. They have reached out a few times, most recently earlier in the year. There was an inquiry about whether or not there would be any interest. But I can't see Max and Lewis working out together. The dynamic wouldn't be right. We are 100% happy with what we have. Now, I don't know about you, but this sounds rather, yeah, I totally have this hot girlfriend, you just don't know her, she goes to a different school, I swear. To us, it sounded like Horner was just stirring the pot, trying to generate unrest in the team, with Hamilton immediately rebuffing Horner's statement after debriefing Toto on the matter, which was probably the smart thing to do, as we know the Austrian's rage is not easy curtailed if left to simmer. Hamilton had this to say, I don't really understand what he's been talking about because no one, as far as I'm aware, from my team has spoken to him. I haven't spoken to Horner really in years. However, he did reach out to me earlier on in the year about meeting up, but that's it. I just congratulated them on an amazing year and said hopefully soon I'll be able to fight against you guys in the near future. That was it. So I'm not really sure. I think he's just stirring things. There aren't any confidential discussions. You know Christian, he loves that kind of stuff. Hamilton would also get to land an extra little jab at Horner, saying, There's a lot of people here that like to drop my name into many conversations because they know it's going to make waves. If you're a little bit lonely and aren't getting much attention, it's a perfect thing to do. Just mention my name. However, news has just dropped claiming that the representative for Hamilton was Hamilton. Anthony, that is. Apparently, Lewis's dad, who oversaw his meteoric rise before stepping back from management duties in 2010, was the representative who reached out to Red Bull to inquire about a seat. Now, either this is the lowest of low blows by Horner by getting Lewis's family involved, or this is just timely revealing of something that happened months ago, as Anthony likely would have reached out, if at all, way back in August before Lewis penned his new contract with Mercedes, so either the reaction of a concerned father looking out for his son, or perhaps something more insidious subterfuge. This seems to be what Toto Wolff believes is the case because he saved no words in describing his exasperation with what he perceives as just mind games being played by the Red Bull boss. I just don't know what drives this guy. We don't understand his thinking to come up with these things. What happened is that Christian, through an agency that we work with, wanted to have his contact details to speak about the seat. That's how the whole thing went. It was Christian inquiring into his availability. Toto went on to reveal that he has seen evidence of Christian's attempts to contact Hamilton, as well as showing his distaste towards being kicked while they are down, saying, Lewis had an exchange with Christian which he immediately told me about, which was not about a seat but it was just… blah. I've seen it so I don't know what drives him to come out with this. You've won the season. Be happy about it. Be humble and enjoy it. I just wonder what's going on up there. So just why has all this happened? Before we get into this save your Lewis fanboy and Max fanboy comments, I've been a neutral in this sport for years, all of this is just our opinion as to why all of this is happening. And truth be told, we think the Horner is trying to deepen the current unrest within the team by sowing doubt and confusion going into the Christmas break. I mean just think about it. There's no better time to drop a false bombshell on a team and stoke up some confusion, frustration and try to create divides within the team than just before an extended break 
break away from the circuits and away from the bulk of media that will report on such issues. It's the equivalent of leaning out of your bedroom, throwing a rock at a wasp nest while people walk under it, and then closing your window and locking it. So all of this got us thinking, why? Could it be that Rebel feel threatened about Mercedes's potential moving forward? That upsetting the apple cart may be the best thing they can do to maintain their advantage into next season? Because after recent news came out, it seems like the next two years may be the only opportunities Red Bull have of claiming championship wins for the foreseeable future, with teams putting faith into Merck to lead them into new regulations in 2026. All of this comes down to the history between the teams, but we're not talking on track here, but factory side. Team philosophy approaches to the regulations and past success stories. Red Bull have always been successful when it comes to their aero packages. Even in the years where they haven't even been a top two team, they always did well at tracks like Monaco due to them bringing fantastic aero that works well on aero-sensitive circuits. This explains their dominance of recent years as the ground effect era is massively dependent on teams' aero packages squeezing the most out of the airflow phenomenon. Contrast this with Mercedes, whose era of dominance arose with a change of engine regulation you can see why Red Bull would perhaps want to squeeze all of the success that they can in the coming years, make hay while the sun shines before the giant wakes up and blots it out. And their best approach may well be doing all that they can in order to confuse and bewilder the team to stop them from catching up while the regulations suit Red Bull's expertise. It seems like it's not just us expecting a massive bounce back from the Silver Arrows in 2026, because while most works teams struggle to gain or are just flat out losing their customer teams, looking at you Ferrari, the rising threat that is McLaren have decided to continue their age-old partnership with Mercedes until 2030. This announcement comes at a perfect time for Mercedes, as while Horner's claims led to a slight rocking of the boats, the fact that both Hamilton and Russell signed contracts earlier this season, and now McLaren have shown a huge sign of belief and faith in the Mercedes project moving forward into the new regulations, has thoroughly steadied the ship. While Zach Brown had strong words for the team's support and the McLaren shareholders' beliefs in Mercedes, we think team principal Andrea Stella put it best when he said, we are pleased to confirm a long-term renewal of our power unit deal with Mercedes-Benz into the new era of regulations. We have great confidence in Mercedes and our relationship with them. They've supported our journey back to the front of the grid so far, and the security and stability this partnership brings is vital to ensuring we remain on this upward trajectory. I would like to thank them for their collaboration so far, and we look forward to the years to come. So regardless of whether Christian's claims had any kind of substance behind them, it seems that the faith put into Mercedes by Hamilton, Russell, and now McLaren has bolstered beliefs that we're in for a big return from the Brackley outfit. The question is, does the grid have to wait for the new regulations, or is the oncoming storm going to arrive sooner than anticipated? So just one day into the weekend, we've already been hit with an absolute roller coaster, with everything from fourth in the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship downwards still undecided, we're in for a hell of a closing chapter to the season. Thank you for watching.